There have been hundreds of evictions since the pandemic started, almost a thousand in fact. Last night, the Board of Supervisors voted to ban those evictions, at least for a little while. Joining us right now, County Supervisor Nora Vargas. Nora, good morning. Thanks for taking the time. And good morning, Earl. Okay, so we had Nathan Fletcher on yesterday, and he specifically said, well, you know, th this was Nora's thing. You should have her on. I said, we will, and we do. <laughs> what are the rules yep. in place specifically for renters, but also for the landlords? Well, I think it's really important to, uh, you know, emphasize that there's actually been over a thousand evictions wow. uh, since uh, the pandemic. And even though, you know, there's legislation in the state of California that actually is supposed to prevent that from happening, uh, what we wanted to do is really just close a loophole, right? We wanted to close a loophole, a temporary loophole, because we know, you know, that, that people are really are in dire straits. And so uh, what this does is that it prevents from somebody being um, evicted uh, for reasons other than uh, a just cause. And the just cause classification was really what we needed to redefine. And so sure. what we did yesterday is just give people a chance to have a little bit of a, of a um, you know, a cushion until they're able to get back on their feet. And what were some of those loopholes and workarounds that people were finding? Yeah, so for instance, one person, uh, one lady, Patricia, that I met, you know, her landlord said, you know, we need to remodel or we have a friend or a family who's moving in. Mm. And the reality is that, you know, there's a lot of good landlords, but there's some who really are taking advantage of the system. They found the loophole and they would kick out people. And so, you know, we talk about homelessness in our communities, and this is one of the ways that uh, we're trying to prevent that, right? What we want to do is do everything we can for people to be able to stay at home. They're paying their rents. Um, and they're doing okay, but when somebody wants to remodel, uh, they're letting people go. And, I, and I'm, what we're asking people is just, you know, give us some time to help people um, through this pandemic. And that's what the county is supposed to do. We're the safety net of our communities. And during difficult times when the state legislature is not doing enough, we're going to make sure that we are there to help them. I, explain to people, if you could, because it, it gets a little bit confusing. I mean, you guys were there to almost uh, 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night yesterday, uh, hammering this out. When this will start, how long it's going to last, and explain the difference between what the state has put in place that's supposed to expire June 30th and what the county has now done. It's still temporary. It's still temporary. This will only take effect 60 days after the state emergency is lifted, right? So I think about uh, August, uh, a little bit about over August. So June 15th is when the state is right. going to be. So this will take it. us into mid-August. Yeah, this will take us into mid-August. Um, you know, one of the things that happened is that uh, we SB 91, which is the legislation that was supposed to protect uh, renters, really had a loophole that allowed folks to be evicted, like I mentioned, for, for things that, um, you know, I'm going to move somebody else in or you're going to we're going to remodel the apartment complex. And so that created a lot of problems for people who are unemployed, even though they were paying the rent, they still had a really hard time uh, staying in their apartment. So um, what's important is that this is going to give people a chance to stay a little bit longer, different than the state, because there was a loophole, like I mentioned. And I think um, it's going to help us get through, you know, at least to this piece of the pandemic as we're moving forward. You know, uh, there are some people uh, who don't agree with you on this. Uh, we just talked to the mayor of Coronado, uh, Richard Bailey. I wanted to play what he had to say and then get your reaction right afterwards. Let's listen. Basically, for uh, landlords, they're not able to collect their full rent for an undetermined period of time going forward. And the only way they can evict their tenants if it is if their tenants are an imminent threat to others. So we've effectively turned private property into government housing for an unknown period of time without properly compensating landlords. I mean, saying private property is being turned into government housing, that, 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 that's a loaded statement right there. Nora, what do you have to say to that? Well, I mean, I think the mayor um, uh, must have some misinformation because the truth is, is that, you know, uh, really the, the, our communities already have, landlords are able to apply for these programs where they're able to get, they're eligible for 80% of the eligible income, right, of households. Um, they really already are, if somebody's an imminent threat, they're able to evict them. You know, and, and I think what, what happens here is what I want to remind folks, if you're a bad landlord, you should be held accountable. Uh, this is not about the landlords who are doing things right. This is for the loopholes, right? A thousand people have been evicted in the county of San Diego since the pandemic for uh, reasons that have nothing to do with just cause. And so I think, you know, it, he's uh, misguided in his information, but it's okay. What what people have done through this particular uh, conversation is they pit, they're pitting landlords against tenants. Mm. That's not what it's about, right? The county this morning, yesterday night, 
um, gave uh, our uh, folks who are renting from the from the county a chance for five years before they actually um, have to pay for their rent. And so why not give folks who just need a little bit of, a, a, of assistance during this very difficult time an opportunity to uh, be able to be in their homes and not be evicted yeah. unless there is just cause. But during a lot of the back and forth last night, you said that uh, perhaps this isn't enough protection for tenants. Uh, what did you mean by that? What else do you think can be done? And some folks are now saying, well, after the two, after the 60 days are up, uh, there might be some more permanent things in the work. Well, I think we have to have conversations with, uh, you know, we're, we're working with tenants, we're working with landlords, there's a lot of misinformation. Uh, I think uh, I was a tenant for many, many years, a renter before I even bought my first home, right? And so everything from financial literacy to actually providing opportunities to people know what their rights are. A lot of folks don't know what their rights are. And I think it's important um, that the county um, is able to provide that information uh, to tenants. And so, you know, we're, we're going to be working with not only uh, tenants, but with landlords as we're moving forward to make sure that everyone in San Diego um, is able to have a roof on, uh, over their head. Before we let you go, I wanted to talk about the programs in place for those struggling to pay the rent, struggling to pay their bills. There, there's money that's been, it's hard to keep track, the money coming in from the federal government, the state, yeah. local municipalities. Where can people go now? So the San Diego Housing uh, Commission has, there's additional, uh, there's funding there so that folks can go. Uh, there's rental assistance, emergency rental relief fund. Uh, for, and there's also um, for mom and pop shops, landlords. Uh, I think that's really important. A lot of folks don't know about that. We want to make sure that they apply. Uh, there's a lot of uh, information at our county website uh, for programs uh, for our communities as well. We've been, the ARPA money, you know, the money from the federal government, we're trying to make sure that people have access to rental assistance. And so right now, I think what we need to do is make sure we get as much information out so people know that these programs are available for them and uh, the county can be there to help them and, and make sure that they get some relief during these difficult times. Uh, Nora, we, we got to go, but quickly, I wanted your thoughts. Uh, the waiving of the restaurant permit fees, is this going to be everybody's agreeing on this or is this also divided? I think that uh, we all want to make sure our economy recovers quickly and we're going to do everything we can to make sure that uh, we, we get people the resources that they need. And so we're going to be looking at that through the budget. And yep. I think there's a, a good response and support uh, towards that as well. This is what I told Nathan yesterday. You, you guys are very busy. There's a lot going on. Uh, so we thank you for taking a few minutes out of your busy day to talk to us. Nora Vargas, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye. Okay.